How's it going, everybody? I sat there and just about opened up a uh, another Zoom, and I was like, hang on. I see the bar down there. We're ready to go. Let's go. I mean, I guess y'all figured out I wasn't prepped. I made us, I made an almost an hour long video on another channel where I exposed fake football. But there's some people that are starting to wake up a little bit. And um, or you know, a lot, it's all at the speed of the Lord. And I just made a gigantic video for them. <laughs> they saw it. People they watch that, they'd be like, Well, what in the world have I gotten myself into? Oh, what's the Lord got you into? What he does with us, he gets us. He gets us into him. We don't do it with our free will. All right, so let's get moving with it. Uh, nevertheless, God, that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consultation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us uh, your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more, for though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle have made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. See, Paul in 1 Corinthians wrote a, we just went over it. He was rough on them. Because they were, uh, you know, the Corinthians were the, uh, I don't know, they were kind of the sex maniacs. One dude was sleeping with his dad's mom and Paul said, cast one like, he said, throw them out. Throw him out to Satan, he said, for the destruction of the flesh so that the soul might be saved. What did he mean by that? He meant, and just like he said in yesterday's study and the day before, whenever it was, be equally yoked. Don't hang out, especially Mary, but don't hang out. Don't let in your church, don't let be with you in your church. This is the church in Corinth which is more like a, um, a commune. You know what I'm saying? You know, those whole hippie communes. <laughs> uh, it was just that that was an upside down version, but th this was a group of people that were Christians living in a borough in an area, you know, I don't even know if it was a township, but it was, I guess it was in part of a town or in a town or was a town. I don't know. Corinth in the Bible, was it a city? Yeah, it was a city. Okay. So it was like a township. Okay. Well, not all the people we were saying were sheep. And, but they're hanging out. They're in your... It's kind of like a church town. I don't know. But Paul said, throw them out. Don't hang, don't have anything to do with them. What one little bit of leaveneth, leaveneth up the whole lump or something to that effect. And what he's saying is he said, throw him out so that he can go down to nothing. Because that's when the Lord calls us when, we, when, when we've been completely busted up by trying to live. See, sheep are born sheep, goats are born goats, but sheep are born lost. And when the lost sheep gets so down and out and humbled, that's when the Lord calls them. And um, I mean, not in every instance, but most of the time. And... I mean, Paul, when he was Saul on the road to Damascus, he had just got through being present at Stephen's stoning, helping out in Stephen's stoning. And um, 
he wasn't bummed out about it a bit. So, you know, not everybody's bummed out, but, but that's what Paul was saying concerning the man that was sleeping with his dad's wife. Uh, throw him, cast one like this unto Satan for the destruction of, in other words, let them go deal with their demons until the Lord calls them and sheds them of their demons and the demons will have worn them out. I mean, I was a Catholic astrologer. I was knee deep in it. And the Lord said, okay. Now, now let's fix you up. Now we're going to fix you up. That's what he does. He pull, starts pulling you out of the world and the world hates you for it. But it's the Lord that does it. It's the Lord that's done everything. There's no free will. He's ordained the end for the beginning. Isaiah 46.10. I was born at 1046. <laughs> Can't make it up. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, um, so, but he was rough. He was rough on him in other parts too. And that's what he's talking about. I know I was rough on y'all, but y'all repented. See, that man repented. Satan busted him up enough and the man was let back in to the, to the community. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. And that's just what um, my amazing friend Vanessa was just talking about. She had a nice little message to me. Love getting messages from y'all. He said the verses in John, she said the verses in John about Jesus speaking about not losing any of his sheep. These verses have always given me peace. Absolutely. Amen. They silence my worry and even wondering. When the world is crazy about everything going on, I know if I am his, nothing can change that. Now, I also know. If one is not his, that can't be changed either. Very true. And so I'm, I'm assuming you're saying it gives you peace when you look around you. I hope you know that. And I've said the same thing about myself at times on certain occasions. But I, I did say this in the reply. Perfectly said. Same. But he will convict our hearts. That's what gives us hope. And what I mean by that is. When you see yourself coming out of the world, being hated for no longer taking part in pagan holidays and not popular with the family or the neighborhood or the job, and they see as peculiar, you know, a peculiar people, the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, when they start to see you as being different, they don't really want to be around you that much anymore. And um, so that's what gives you hope. Jesus said, the world hated me before it hated you, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. When you see yourself being hated, you will get that hope. You know what I'm saying? You don't just want to throw your hands in the air. And I don't think this is what Vanessa is saying. You don't throw your hands in the air and go, well, I don't care what I do. I'm either a sheep or I'm not. I'm just going to go, I'm going to go get drunk and cheat on my spouse and I might steal some money. <laughs> no. So you get the idea. You will feel that calling to repentance. You'll be convicted in your heart. So I said, perfectly said, same, but he will convict our hearts. That's what gives us this hope. But yes, nothing we can do about what's already been declared. Well said, love it. But I knew I would speak to it to give a little more context, you know. But uh, always glad Vanessa is here with us, that's for sure. And uh, she messaged me a lot on Facebook, and I really enjoy her messaging, too. It's very, um, it's good to have fellowship with church, real church, not a fake church, but people that understand the truth in God's word. So godly sorrow worketh repentance. Yes, that's exactly what me and Vanessa are talking about. To salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work of death. So 
another thing concerning that Vanessa's comment. Now I rejoice, not that we were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. You will, you know, get that conviction in your heart. God said, I will put my law in their inward parts. So you'll feel it. And that's what gives you hope. Uh, it says, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Uh, to get an idea. Now, I am glad I sent it, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. And it was the kind of sorrow God wants his people to have. Exactly. So just to put that in context uh, with what Vanessa said and what I said back, uh, you will go through these experiences. And Vanessa has, and I have. Wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lack repenteth, results in spiritual death. I mean, I've, I've had people say, you don't have to repent. And this is before I even understood election and predestination. I was a free will believing Christian, but I did at least know you've got to repent. But where's the trick? Where's the rub? Repent to what degree? Well, all the sins in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, I would tell somebody then. But you can't pull yourself out of all of that. Enough. Oh, excuse me. To the point to where you've repented enough. Unless the Lord pulls you through that. You can't free will your way through repentance. I was thinking I was, and then realized that's impossible. Anyway, let's go back to the King James. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge in all things, Ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this manner. Now, that was a big verse for 11. It's big in the, um, usually the New Living is bigger than the King James. That was a big verse for King James. Just see what this godly sorrow produced in you. Such earth, excuse me, earnestness, such concern to clear yourselves, such indignation, such alarm. Such longing to see me, such zeal, and such readiness to punish wrong. You show that you have done everything necessary to make things right. So the second letter is like saying, nice job, y'all listen to my first letter. My purpose then was to not write about who did the wrong or who was wronged. I wrote you so that in the sight of God, you could see for yourselves how loyal you are to us. Wherefore, though I wrote you, I did not for this cause that I had done the wrong, nor for this cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear unto you. All right, very good. All right, let's... Contraction for let us... Open Revelation 7, verses 1 through 8. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. What were those things? Uh, the day of God's wrath has come. <laughs> so I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Foreheads? God seals his on their foreheads. It's a spiritual sealing. 
the mark of the beast foreheads. It's a spiritual ceiling. That's what I keep telling you. They're going to possess, the fallen angels are going to possess the human body and use it as an avatar to kill sheep. They're possessed. All goat humans will be possessed and given superpowers. That's what the superhero movies are about. But they showed you this in detail in the movie Venom. Anyway, saying hurt not to see. Oh, anyway, read that. And I heard the number of them, which were sealed, and there were sealed, and hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Juba were sealed, twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed, twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed, twelve thousand. Asher, Manassas, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zabulon, Joseph, Benjamin. We'll continue the rest tomorrow if there's more. I don't know. I don't think that's all 12. And um, I think where it's speaking of this could potentially just be the bloodline remnant that gets the call after the last non-bloodline oh excuse me jew gets the call and um which is at the abomination of desolation so at some point before god's wrath he begins the process of sealing his church that was left on the earth there's another part where this is spoken of also. And I wonder sometimes, I don't know, it's very difficult to try to figure out, but this is the church or it's just the bloodline or it's the church mixed with bl bloodline and, because we're grafted in Jews. So are we part of these tribes spiritually? Or did God really have a remnant of exactly 12,000 of the bloodline of Asher set aside and alive as he stopped the great tribulation that he had an exact number that would be alive and that would be an exact 12. Of course, they, the Lord can do that. So, you know, where people go, well, that's just symbolic. Don't think things are symbolic all the time. Now, this could be, or it could be somebody like you or me, who's not of the bloodline, <laughs> but, you know, we are grafted in Jews. To be a true Jew is to be a sheep is to be Israel or of Israel is to be of the church. The church is Israel. Israel is the church. We are grafted in Jews. So anyway, let me very much ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.